So I'd like to take you on a tour of the connective tissues of the knee joint. Now, the way I've created this model out of Sculpey clay with different colors, I did that in order to kind of clue you into the, the different textures and types of tissue. But I want to say at the outset that making them all in different colors is a little misleading because the knee is actually just one beautiful silvery banded uh, being. It's a, it's a unity. And we have all this vocabulary to describe the different thickenings and vectors of tissue, the different layers of tissue that form the knee joint. But I hope this helps actually to show you those differences with a model. So come on down and have a look. I've got Mr. Bones here with the kind of connective tissues of the knee built up in different colors. And I'll, I'll identify what we're looking at here. So let the light green color, let the light green color be the, the, the general deep fascia, right, of the, of the knee area. And this would all be silver, silvery white. But in the midst of that deep fascia of the knee, the fascia profundus, we have a thick band, a very thick band. It's the tendon, the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle in which the kneecap is actually it's built into it. The, the, the kneecap, the sesamoid bone of the knee, actually lives inside the tendon of the quadriceps femoris, goes over the knee joint, and anchors onto a bump here called the, the tibial tuberosity. So we have a total wrap, but then this tremendous thickening running down the middle in which the kneecap is invested. And then you see this darker band of, of green clay here. Again, it's all one wrap, but in this wrap we find another thickening. This thickening would be the IT band, the iliotibial band. And the iliotibial band starts way up at your hip and comes on down over the leg. And then what happens to it? Well, it just blends into the fascia of the lower leg. I haven't put all that here, but just to give you the sense of it, there's a thickening, a thickening on the lateral side, and then there's a thickening right down the middle, this being the tendon of the quadriceps, this being the IT band. And yet we're really in one sleeve of tissue. And I've removed, the, I've removed the femur from the joint so that we can study the connective tissues as I take them apart. But this would fit into here, and this, and this would continue on into the quadriceps. So I pulled that away. And look down this, look down this tunnel here. You can see there's a whole bunch of structures there. If we were to just magically remove the femur, there's a whole bunch of structures in here. There's this green, that would be the kneecap, right? So there's your kneecap invested in, this, in, the, in the tendon here. And then there you see some yellow and some pink. Well, I think I'm gonna need to dissect a little further for you to see that better. So I think I'll cut. I'm gonna cut right here, and we're gonna cut the kneecap out. If I can, I've got to watch that I don't cut my fingers. I didn't put my gloves on for this. Not that that would help. So I'm going to cut through here. And let's pull this clay back. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to cut right across here. Make our, this is what you have to do in dissection. If you want to see more, you have to cut tissues away. Okay, so now I've taken the kneecap out. You can see how that was built into the, built into the tendon there. Now where are we? What's this, what's this yellow stuff? So the yellow stuff here, we're going to call that the infrapatellar fat pad, the underneath the kneecap fat pad, the infrapatellar fat pad. And you see there's like a little tendony thing sticking out of it. Well, that's the infrapatellar synovial fold, and it actually anchors to the femur. So when people are doing dissection on my courses, they usually open up the knee, they see this 
yellow strip here coming across an anchor to the femur and say, oh, how exciting, it's the, it's the anterior cruciate ligament. But it's not the anterior cruciate ligament. There's other stuff in there that just didn't get mentioned in your course, okay? So we have a fatty pad underneath the kneecap to make it nice and cushy and slippery in there. And, and there's an, a relationship between the kneecap and the fat pad and the femur, and that's what that is. So I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna actually, let me dissect that out. It's kind of blocking my view. So I'm gonna cut, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna cut through that fat pad there. And, uh, and this is what we do in the lab. We cut stuff away. And we can see now we have a little fat pad remnant there. That's okay, it's not in our way now. Now, what's this pink lining? So this pink lining, actually, I'm just gonna peel this, I'm just gonna peel this away. I'm gonna peel, I'm gonna peel off this, all this deep fascia, it's a lot of work, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, I'm gonna peel all that away. Okay, now we have a totally different scene here, right? When we take away the first layer of the fascia, uh, and it brings us down to the joint capsule. Now the joint capsule I have in pink. So the joint capsule is, is kind of a fascia relating not the whole upper leg to the whole lower leg. It's just relating the, the femur to the, to the tibia. So you see there's a, a membranous capsule. I've made it in pink. It would be silvery white, like I mentioned. And you can see on either side of it, there's a thickening. So there's a thickening here, and it's kind of broad and flat. It's at the medial aspect. And we're gonna call that the, the tibial collateral ligament. You see, it's on the tibia side of the joint, the tibial collateral ligament. Many of you may know this as the medial collateral ligament, but they changed its name. That's what nomenclature committees do. They, that way they can make new books, okay? <laughs> and they can reprint all the books <laughs> with the new words. <laughs> so, so this is the tibial collateral ligament in the new nomenclature, and many of you will know this is the medial collateral ligament. The medial lateral ligament is kind of flat and broad and relates the tibia, that relates the tibia to the femur. So I'm taking that away. And then on this side, I have a more cord-like ligament. You see, this one's going to the fibula. They call this one the fibular collateral ligament but it used to be called the lateral collateral ligament. So pardon the change in nomenclature. I'm just keeping you up, up to date with the latest, uh, <laughs> the latest confusing name change in anatomy. So lateral collateral, also known now as fibular collateral ligament. It's more cord-like. It's kind of easy to see if you go cross leg a little bit and just put your fingers over by your over by the head of your fibula and you'll feel a kind of bouncy trouncy cord like ligament over there. And although I've made them in different colors, they're very much part of this joint capsule. Okay, they're a continuity, they're a thickening, they're a fiber direction. Uh, and having very particular shapes and you can cut this out with a knife and say ta-da, we have our our um, fibular and tibial collateral ligaments, and yet what you've done then is opened the joint capsule, right? Because they're continuous. So let's do that. Let's cut away our, 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 uh, our ligaments here just for fun. And I didn't actually do it so that it would, because of the different colors, I didn't, I didn't cut the joint capsule yet. So we're gonna cut the joint capsule, and this is gonna bring us down to yet another level of the knee. So I'm gonna take away this joint capsule. Oh, you see, we still got some of this. I want to just say one more time, every one of these colored tissues are continuous, right? Integrated, part of, and need to be cut away from the other ones. None of them pop off like pieces of clay as if they were some different thing. Now, where are we? Well, things are getting really interesting now. I'm gonna take away this whole tendon. I'm gonna take away the fatty body. And what's left here are <laughs> some beautiful structures that are so continuous that I just made them in the same color. So what we have here are the menisci of the knee joint, which are kind of cartilaginous wedge-shaped crescent pads inside of your knee joint. And then we have our anterior and our posterior cruciate ligaments. So if I've started from behind the knee and followed 
on the lateral side, you'd see that the, menis the meniscus anchors to the bone here, blends with the bone, is continuous with the bone, arises up, follows around the tibial plateau here, the top of the condyle, and swoops up and swirls into another thing, right? It becomes this, this thick, uh, this very thick ligament. This would be the anterior cruciate ligament because we're in the front of the knee joint. Now, it doesn't stop there because we have our medial meniscus here, which is both continuous with the anterior cruciate and then swoops around, swoops around, swoops around and rises up into the intercondylar space and forms the posterior cruciate ligament. And you see how the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments are actually tied together by, f by connective tissue? They are. They're actually continuous with each other. So we give them different names and yet they're bound to each other. And if we, if we, bring, our, if we bring our femur over here, we can see what we call, these are the condyles here, are the condyles, and this is the intercondylar space. And the, uh, the cruciate ligaments live inside of that intercondylar space bound to the condyles, right, and anchored to them. So if I come around this, this way, we can see our anterior cruciate ligament. Now remember, if you were just beginning the dissection, you'd have your, uh, you'd have your, uh, your little uh, in, infra, infra patellar synovial fold right there. So I've taken it away and we pull away the femur and we see the lay of the land. Now many of you have heard about the menisci from the idea of a torn meniscus or, a, or maybe you've heard of the, of the cruciate ligaments from a ACL injury from skiing or something like that. Well, here they are. Anterior cruciate, posterior cruciate, medial meniscus, lateral meniscus, which are really one continuous formation of connective tissue inside your knee. Now, one thing I didn't show you here is the synovial fluids. So this is a synovial joint and inside of that, inside of that, uh, that joint capsule or space, we're going to have a, enough fluid, a small amount, to make this slippery and quite amazingly uh, cushiony such that the bone really never contacts the bone on a good day, right? Because there's fluid, there's menisci, there's cushioning. So there's your connective tissues of your knee joint. It's quite a collection of tissues. You can watch this video over and over again if you want to keep studying it. It's always fun to see it in dissection too. I'll put some videos up on my website about that. Meanwhile, thanks Mr. Bones. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.